In this lecture, we'll learn about inheritance, which is an important feature of object-oriented programming. Inheritance is basically a mechanism of creating a new class from an existing class. The new class is the extended and modified version of the existing class. The main advantage of inheritance is that it facilitates code reuse. Let us understand this with the help of an example. You want to create employee objects which should have these methods and these data members. Now suppose you already have a person class that has most of the functionality that you need for an employee class. You need to add just some new things and maybe change a few things. So instead of creating a brand new employee class from scratch, you can create your employee class by inheriting from the person class. This existing class is called the base class and this class is called the derived class. When you inherit from a class, everything from that class becomes automatically available in the derived class. So here in this case, there was no need to copy everything from person class to the employee class. Due to inheritance, this employee class has access to everything from the person class. And this class can have variables and methods of its own also. So when you derive a class, the class gets access to everything from the base class. It can add new variables and methods of its own. And it can even change the way some of the methods of the base class work. For example, this contact details method that is there in the person class will be inherited by this employee class. Now suppose you want this method to work differently for the employee class. You can do this by providing separate code for it here. So a derived class can add its own version of a method. This is called overriding. The derived classes generally have some added functionality and provide more specific behavior than the base class. This base class is also called the parent class or super class. And this derived class is also called the child class or subclass. In object-oriented terms, this relationship between the base class and the derived class is called is a relationship. Derived class is a type of base class. So an employee is a person. So by using inheritance, you can implement is a type of relationship between classes. Now this is just a simple example. The real world classes would be more complex and will have a lot more code. By using inheritance, you can use the features of a class that has already been tested and is running. And this definitely reduces effort and thus saves time. You can easily create new classes by using the tried and tested functionality of an existing class. Now let us go to idle and see the syntax of deriving a class. We have this person class with these four instance variables name, age, address and phone and these three methods greet, is adult and contact details. Now let's make a new class named employee by inheriting from this person class. Now after this name employee, we'll write this name person inside parenthesis and put a colon here. So this line means create a new class employee that inherits from this class person. And here we write this pass statement. We have not written anything inside this class. But since it is inherited from the person class, it gets access to everything from this person class. Now let us create an instance of this employee class. Now this employee class has access to the init method of the person class. So all these arguments will be passed to this init method. And this instance object will have all the attributes name, age, address and phone. So let us run this. So this instance object emp has all these attributes. Now let us call the methods. So we can see that the instance object of employee class has access to everything from the person class. Now let us use the isInstance function on this instance emp.
this returns true so emp is an instance of employee class now instead of employee let us write person here this also returns true which proves the is a relationship between employee and person then there is another built in function named is subclass that can be used to check whether a class is subclass of another class so this returns true because employee is a subclass of person class every class in python inherits from a class called object the class object is the base class for any class that you define so this returns true which shows that person is derived from object all the types like str int dict are names of classes so if we write this returns true and here instead of str if we write int this also returns true so all the classes in python are derived from this object class now let us come back to our employee class and add some new methods and data members to it first we'll define the init method for this employee class we need to add three more instance variables which are salary office address and office phone so we copy this in it and now we'll add the rest of the attributes now when we create this employee instance we need to send three more arguments so here we send salary 8000 and then office address and office phone now let's add a new method named calculate tax to this employee class So if the salary is less than 5000 it will return 0 otherwise it will return 5% of the salary Now let's run this This is the salary attribute Now let's call this method calculate tax So we got this value So we have added a new method and these methods were inherited from the person class Sometimes you may want a method from the base class but you would like it to behave differently in the derived class. For example, we want a contact details method for employee class but we want that to have a different definition from what is there in the person class. In such a case, you can override the method. To override a method, just define a method in the derived class with the same name as in the base class. So let us override this method contact details. Here in this employee class we want to display the office address and office phone also. Now employee class has its own version of contact details and when an employee instance will call this method this version will be executed. So let's call this So this version was executed. So if a derived class defines a method with the same name then this method overrides the method of the base class it effectively hides the base class method however you can call the base class version explicitly using the base class name so for example here instead of copying this code from the base class we could call the base class version here so instead of this line we'll call the base class method let's run this in fact here also we could do the same thing because we have overridden the init method instead of this code we could call the base class in it
So here we have called the init method of the person class. It takes these four parameters. So we have sent these arguments here. Let's run this. So if the derived class is overriding a method and wants to use the functionality of the base class version, then it is better to call the base method instead of just copying the code. This reduces code duplication and later if the base class method changes, the change will be reflected in the derived class method also. A better way of calling the base class method is by using the super built-in function. So here we can write super. And now there is no need of sending self. Similarly, here also we can write super. Use of this super built-in function is preferred because using base class name can create confusion in multiple inheritance where a class inherits from more than one base class. We will see multiple inheritance in the next lecture. Let's run this. So this also works. You can have multi-level inheritance, which means that from the derived class, you can further inherit another class. For example, from this employee class, you can inherit a class called teacher and a class called accountant. So all attributes of person are available in employee class. And all attributes of employee class are available in this teacher class and in this accountant class. From person, you can inherit another class named student. Now, as we have seen before, there is an is a relationship between the derived classes and the base classes. So teacher is an employee, accountant is an employee, employee is a person, student is a person, and teacher is a person, and accountant is a person. Thus, another advantage of inheritance is that you can design your system by using inheritance so that it will reflect the natural relationship between different components of your system. This simplifies the design and makes programs easier to understand. So reusability of code and being able to represent the system using hierarchy of classes are the two main benefits of inheritance. However, you should use inheritance only when there is some natural relationship between classes. Unnecessary use of inheritance can make the system incomprehensible and can create unwanted dependencies between classes.